And I see, as I see this particular image, uh, there are other adults in the room. They're at the back of the room. And it really, really feels like, and again, they're in the shadow. But what I can sense from their presence in the room is that they're really, really glad that you're there. They really, really feel that you're an important piece of the work that they do but you bring something different because you're not part of this, let's say, quote unquote, institution. Does this idea resonate in some way? Kind of like a guest speaker. Yeah, I guess uh, speaker or someone that, you know, again, like something like a nonprofit comes forward and like you, you are working within these, like, let's say established um, uh, institutions isn't a great word, but you know what I mean? Like yeah, place. You know, com- companies or yeah, whatever they are that there's a limitation for them because it's bureaucratic or it's it's governmental or it's funded by x y and z and there's only so much they can do and it's sort of got this feeling like you know the people that work there they love what they do but they feel like their hands are tied and there's only so much they can do there's something about you coming into these places that brings fresh air uh that could be fresh ideas there's also a sense here too that it might even be like uh i'm going to say fresh money but what i mean by fresh money is uh either you've you know you're out fundraising and bringing it to them and saying this is how i want to contribute this to this organization to help these types of people or um there's just a real you know like a breath of fresh air that you're bringing to what feels old and stuffy or like it's only working so well and it's almost like you've got you know maybe an innovative new idea or just a, a there's something about what you bring um to these places and people in need uh and it almost like you are a um a face for something else does that make sense yeah it sounds like um consulting yeah like consulting absolutely or like like you're the um let's say what i'm sort of seeing here in this particular image is that uh, you work for, a, you know, something that feels more up and coming, like let's just say just for lack of better words at the moment, like a startup, but also the, the thing that comes forward here is non-profit, like another organisation that is more based around, it's not government run, it's not, you know, um, institutionalised in the sense that, you know, you've got all these, you can only do this and you can only do that. You know, it's fresh minds of people coming together who care about a cause and you're one of the like leading people going out and getting the word out or you know connecting uh these two sort of again it's like light and shadow this group of people that you're working for you maybe even be that you one who puts this together you know you're the light who the company that's the light going into these companies that are sort of in the shadow and you're helping them does that make sense yeah yeah yeah, and you're really sort of like a, the, one of the representatives. You're one of the, like, you know, f- front people. You're one of the connectors, you know, like there's the people who are back in the office doing the, you know, whatever, raising the money, whatever, that's not your role. You're you're the people person. You're the one connecting with that genuine connection, that genuine care that really helps you get in the door and help others feel that, you know, what you have to offer or whatever it is that you're working, whoever you're working with, you know, let them know that this help is there or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Does that all make sense? Yeah, I'm piecing it together, but um, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was wondering why in this lifetime I don't want kids and mm-hmm. I want, I love traveling a lot. Okay. <laughs> Could be something from past kids. life. Or, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to ask if there is some past life influence here around your desire for travel over children. How does, does that sound oh, like the question? Um, it's like two parts, actually. Like one, why I have no, uh, no desire for children. No desire for children. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. um, and then also why I am obsessed with traveling. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's ask the first one then. Uh, if there's some past life influence or if it's this life about not wanting children so when i ask that question again what they bring me is this image of you uh and again this time you look like 
like a saint you also look like they've got this sort of superimposed image of you but also let's say like you know mother mary and again what i see is like your heart space fully lit up like a bright light you know okay i'm laughing again because earlier there was saintly energy mother Teresa mentioned and now mother mary um yeah i don't feel like i'm even close to living up to those names or reputations but um hey i'll take it <laughs> shining um that there's this capacity within you it's almost like the the work you're going to do um f fulfills you in a way that i don't know it just really looks like that there's there's no need because there's this greater purpose and um work you're here to do that fulfills you in such a way that you know everyone you meet or every child you help a person you help um like that brings you so much joy that it's not about uh, you know the, the the it's almost like you have a higher purpose here than being a mother like when i ask that question i literally don't get the sense of motherly energy or or children here as well um and and this sort of just showing me you now uh that this this, this time here now is about service. It's about your um, your impact, what you are here to do, and, and who who you are here to impact. Um, that that that's the bigger overriding uh, like purpose here for you this time round. Okay, so what's interesting is uh, so you heard about right here um, from the Akashic Records reader why I don't feel ever about having that, um, uh, is it called maternal instinct kick in where you kind of want to have children of your own. But then in the past life reading, check out in another Trang tries it series that it seeps into this life of wanting to be independent. And obviously having children would not offer that sense of independence to me. And then off the record, um, off of, YouTube. I spoke with the grandpa before and asked him, I was like, why don't I want kids? And he showed that there was a past life where I lost a child. Um, and it was so painful for me to lose that child. And so I don't want any kids or it's that past life has carried into this life. I'm sure it could be a culmination of all of them but it's interesting it just shows you that when you go to different readers it doesn't necessarily mean they're right or wrong it could be just like this energy added with this experience and the energy from that experience brings into this life and that is why you don't want kids but just a little side tidbit for you so then for why are you so obsessed with travel let's see if i have any insight for you on that question so when i ask that question I get this visual of you uh, and I literally just see you traveling, but I'm going to ask them to expand the image and give me some more information here. So when I ask that, there's there's the set to say like you're really at home within the world. Um, I'm going to ask them to continue. Give me some more information here. Yeah, and it's so interesting. like. That last question and this question, the way that I, I see you uh, in these images, like this time round when I when we see you in the travel, there's such a sort of like contentness and um, like wholeness about you that, you know, this feels like enough. You love this travel. It fills you in a certain way. You know, you're, you're, you're not having children, but being of service fills you in a really whole way. So it's kind of like showing me in both of these questions is that these two things, um, you know, your role here on earth rather than being a mother to be of service to others, less fortunate is really what's sort of come forward for you today. And the sense of travel are kind of like, well, for whatever reason, when I see the one with travel, I see you as a man. Um, and I see you as a man in like a car in what feels like Europe somewhere. Um, I'm going to ask them for some more information about that one, if this is 
another lifetime that they're showing me this. Yeah, so when I ask that question, it's they stick with the image of this guy and for whatever reason he feels German. And uh, it also appears to me like he's like a travel writer and um, part, I think this is, this is uh, yeah, a past life where this has been because it feels like, you know, 1920s or something and, you know, it's sort of got that error about it where, uh, you know, it's the old school cars and, uh, you know, he's got his little notebook and pen and for whatever reason there's his little round glasses and uh, he's going about these, you know, places and for, like, I'm seeing kind of like, you know, Monaco now, like really flashy places in the 20s and uh, he's just joy of this travel writing and that, that lifestyle of the rich and famous at some point. So... Um, I think we're connecting here for you of like you've you've had a life where that was something that really brought you so much joy that it just sort of filters through um, this time around as well. Um, and it's so interesting because I don't see yeah the version of you now. I see you as a German man. <laughs> um, but these two things really feel like big pieces of who you are. And and what I mean by that is like they have a strong strong energy like even this this image of this german man uh this travel sense here again i keep seeing it as uh him looking out to a sunset it's like it's such a pleasurable thing it's just one of those moments where you just breathe out and like oh this is this feels so good on a soul level so um really sort of seeing that for you as uh just knowing that it's it, it's just it, it touches you in a, in a different way to most people like it it's it's good for your soul to travel so um when it comes to the kids piece it's just that your soul's here for a different purpose it's just there there you you're of a you're needed of a different for a different reason here this time around Great. do you have any other questions yeah um yeah what uh, this is maybe two questions. It's kind of like similar, but I guess mm -hmm. what lessons were was I? What lessons were I meant? Was I meant to learn during this lifetime? And mm -hmm. what are things that are holding me back, like beliefs, behaviors um, that are holding me back in this lifetime, and how can I release them? Okay. Okay. Let me ask then. Let me ask the second one. Um, actually, I'll ask them together and see what we get. Um, what lessons you have come here to learn? So we'll stick with that one. And, and normally when I see my images are sort of out in front of me, this one's inside. So this is very much about uh, something you're experiencing of yourself, but I can't quite get the image. Let me ask them to continue and expand it for me. So it's really interesting. It's like... It's everything went dead quiet, and again we sort of come to this sort of this sort of a little bit of a somber image. It's uh, it almost looks like a, a headstone, and again it looks really old, um, and it looks really big, and I just see it sort of in the sort of evening light, and it's like everything within my senses here just went quiet. Um, so may I ask for a bit more information here. So when I ask that question, it's it's so interesting. Everything is just silent. Like it's like it's either like <laughs> the tombstone is like just the uh, like a you know we don't want to answer that question, or uh, I'm just gonna ask them for to show me in another way what it is they're trying to say here. Hmm. So when I ask that question, they they're sort of showing me that this is sort of as I said to you, I see it internally and I see it at the level of the heart now what I see is this big headstone kind of obscures what's on the other side and I get a sense and I can sort of see that again it's the sun setting so I'm getting some of this afternoon light but it's like there is something here standing between me and uh you know this lesson uh, or, or this, this tombstone is your lesson, but it is actually something that is blocking your light. So this is a big, big good question. Uh, do you sense something within you that 
feels like, uh, let's say, a barrier or a, a defensive wall or a protective layer that you feel like you need to like get around to truly express the truth of who you are, like really shine your light because. You know, it's interesting because so much of what we saw before was, you know, you as this horse and this strength and this confidence. But all of a sudden we have this very big uh, headstone here kind of like obscuring for me um, the the sunset. What comes up for you when I say that? Um, I'm not sure. Hmm, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so this is the part where I'm, I'm like, I, uh, again, the level of interpretation is, um, like, I'm kind of, you know, let me know your thoughts down below, because I'm still trying to interpret it, and there's so many different ways to interpret it, like, the headstone, is that death, because of the death in the family, um, is it, like, me having, like, walls up that are subconscious, is it um, meaning to speak my my story? If you look up at like the psychic mediumship session that I got, she mentioned about like being on a podcast and radio. Is it that like being able to tell my story out in public to the masses, and then that will get rid of the headstone? Like, or is the headstone just more like me blocking myself from something? And I need to get rid of the headstone. There's, there's so many ways to think about this. Yeah. Um, I like with that visual. I'm kind of like, I don't know how to interpret it. And yeah. I was hoping they would give you another easier image, I guess. But yeah, um, yeah, it's okay. I still have like, I know we only have like a few minutes left, so I still have mm -hmm. just a. This makes me think about when I die. And I want to, and someone wants to contact me through a psychic medium, you know, like sometimes it's not so straightforward. So you have to think when you pass away, what is something you're going to show your loved ones, like an image or it could be a sound um, if the psychic medium like hears sounds, that is. But how are you going to send a certain sign or symbol that your loved ones will get? that isn't too generic but same time like it pertains to you so as i get into the spiritual world, metaphysical world working for happy healing shop it's something that's on my mind where i'm like how would i tell my friends that this is me like i can't just say oh i love um i'm just making this up i love toyota camrys because that's what i drive right now and they'll be like okay the spirit is showing me toyota camrys and you're like well any so many people drive toyota camrys so you have to like really think about things that you can show that um, or if you're trying to give them a message, your loved one's a message about don't do this, you know, or maybe like you need this in your life instead, or don't forget to do this X, Y, Z. Like, how are you going to show that through photos and images or like videos or um, sights, um, smells, sounds like that? So that's just something that, that I think about a lot. <laughs> few more questions okay uh, sure yeah and this one's just like uh another one i found online that i was like oh this is a good okay. question i think um what do i need to do or what are some things or practices or things i can do to attract abundance good vibes or like goodness like um energetically and physically into my life for now okay. in the next couple of years what are some now? practices i can do to attract um, yeah, abundance and abundance. good stuff. Just say, I guess, good stuff. And good stuff. Energetically okay. and physically. Okay. All Besides right. Besides meditating. Because <laughs> I feel yeah. like that's the answer for a lot of things. And I'm like, anything else? <laughs> uh, let's see. What, what are some practices that trying can do uh, to, to attract abundance and good stuff energetically and physically into her here and now life? So when I ask that question, they're not showing me meditation, fortunately for you. <laughs> but what they show me, <clears throat> and again, this is a visual image inside my physical body, is literally like the big red heart emoji, but like the full size of your chest. Um, I'm going to ask them for a bit more information here to expand this image, what it is they're trying to bring forward for you. 
When I ask that question, I then see an image of your face like with your eyes closed, but you're like so happy. Like if you can imagine you're so happy that you're like squealing and your eyes shut because you're just so happy. And it's like you're bursting full of like joy and happiness and excitement. Um, I'm going to ask them for a bit more info here but to expand this for me. So when I ask that question, what they're saying then is that this is not so much about something to do, uh, that this feeling of abundance um, and good stuff, like especially energetically and even physically, uh, is something that you cultivate internally and you let it kind of almost like pour forth from you so um so interesting i'm going to send you something after this that i actually channeled yesterday uh funnily enough and i don't didn't know why until maybe today about abundance uh and how we can tap into that so i'll share that with you separately but let me see if they have anything else for you about this <clears throat> And again, they're just really sort of wanting you to like feel joy. Like, and again, it's not about doing something. They're not <clears throat> not showing me you doing a meditation or like doing yeah. artwork or, you know, going traveling. It's about knowing that this feeling comes from within. And again, like I said, they really show me at the center of that image is like a big bright red heart um, that these are feelings and experiences cultivated from within you know it's not about do so yeah. while meditation it's like a state of being yeah meditation is your way of getting out of your mind and into your body so you know it's about having those moments where i can connect to what is how do i how do i tap into the abundance that comes from within the joy that comes from within does that make sense yep yep yeah um, okay it's kind of one of those things, right? Like you already hear about the answer, happiness is state of being, but it's just in, just in case I wanted to ask if there was something I was overlooking. Um, yeah. And then finally, um, I think the last two questions I have is, um, I don't, for karma, uh, I guess, I don't know if, like if there's karmic debt or whatever, but is there mm -hmm. anything that like any karmic debt I need to clear or something from a past life in this life I'm supposed to be like overcoming and then finally mm -hmm. um the question after that is what major future lives do you see me living mm -hmm. okay so I've got probably got time for one more because we're on the hours which okay. one would you like to answer um let's do let's do future lives okay so what was the question um what are some major future lives I'll be living like what will I be doing in those lives Okay. Okay. Let's see if they have anything for you on that. What what major future lives will you be living? <laughs> so when I ask that question, they're sort of like um, they go quiet again. But there's this real sense of. Um, like like if you were to imagine that you've just asked someone that question and someone's looking back to you kind of a little bit perplexed about why you're asking them that question because they're kind of like looking at you sort of saying like do you want like you, you've got to live this life first uh is it the sort of like well wait a second this one now um let me see if they have anything for you on this if they want you to want to know anything about this And when I ask that question, there's like, there's, there's a sort of flurry of images and the sort of words of s s coming through saying that there's, you know, there's unlimited potential of what will happen in the future in terms of another life. Um, and this all depends on what you do here this time. Right? Because you're here and much with your karma question is, you've got to what you do and what you achieve in this lifetime will be part of what is a deciding factor for which potentials and which future you know lives you will choose at that time does that make sense yep yeah 
Okay, so Trina, how are you feeling with what came forward for you today? Okay, really quick thing about future lives. Just to offer a different perspective because, you know, um, I think with, again, the metaphysical or spiritual world, there is people get information um, differently. And it's kind of like everyone growing up. You're growing up with different belief systems and stuff like that. But anyway, so you get, sometimes you get inf different information. So there's always the argument of it. You'll see it on like online, TikTok and stuff like that. People are saying who's right, who's wrong. But um, the thing is, uh, so there was that where it was just like what you do in this life depend like will affect like um, the future life and what you end up choosing. Um, there is another episode we have. It's speaking with my grandpa in the afterlife. It's Grandpa Luan series. Um, so make sure you check out episode uh, 17. And in it, I talk to him and ask him about like past lives and future lives, present life. And it was, you'll see, it's interesting, but he explains how they're all happening at the same time even though that's really hard for the human eye for us to understand. So check that out, it's really fascinating. And also in um, a medium session that I've seen before, um, we didn't know this until it was shown to Maria that there are some future, I say future because they're happening all at the same time, but some future lives we do pick and kind of plan out ahead of time. But keep in mind, we have so much free will to do what we want or what we don't want in our life and it's to kind of advance humanity too at the same time um so that's it's such a complicated um topic but that's just another perspective to offer you so um again everyone interprets and also receives information um differently or are given information differently um yeah i think i'll i'll have to like look back at the reading and mm -hmm. like kind of like let it soak in for a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let me thank uh, your guides, your record keepers uh, for what they brought forward for you today. I'm going to ask them to close your records. And your records are now closed. And there you have it. Now you know what an Akashic Records reading looks like, or in this case, sounds like. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it and what type of questions would you have asked. To book a reading with Kate, check out the link down below. And finally, if you'd like to learn more about past lives, soul contracts, spirit guides, angels, developing your intuition and psychic abilities, or even starting your own spiritual business, check out the many resources we offer at thehappyhealingshop.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.